Conference Final Jeopardy. Playwrights is the subject. Make your wagers, and we'll get a clue when we come back. Hey there, I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. Welcome to the Final Wager. I'm Keith Williams, and we got a pretty good game going on here. Bryna, not Brenna, as Alex introduced her in the beginning. 17-6, Aaron, 14-8. <clears throat> Perhaps taking a guess on that last clue, which is a good play there, because if you can be in first heading into Final Jeopardy, you want to be there. Wilkie, 3,800, still got a shot. Never know what Aaron's going to do here. Aaron could keep him locked out, though. This is a Shores conjecture situation. And actually, that last guess made things a little bit more difficult for Wilkley, because he definitely has to get it right now. Uh, these two are separated by 2,800, whereas before they were only 800 apart. And Wilkley could have just stood pat. And if Brina had gone, sorry, Brina had gone for everything, then uh, for the lockout, I should say, then Wilkley would have been fine. But now he's got to get it right. The, uh, yeah, that last category in the second round, the actors and different initials, was just stupid. Why would you, why do you even need that information? Just ask who the person who gave the, I thought they were going to have that person, like Angela Bassett, read Puss in Boots lines, which would have been hilarious. Actually, Antonio Banderas' voice is what I resort to whenever I have to speak Spanish. I want to sound like I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about, which I generally don't. So, with a Spanish accent, I'll say, Yes, it is very nice of you to come and watch Jeopardy with me. Uh, here's a little snippet about Harry Friedman breaking the record. Congratulations for most game shows produced. And, uh, oh, this guy's suit. You get us for a record, guy. <laughs> so formal. Anyway, let's do the math here quickly. 13, uh, well, there's everybody by 2,800, so... Uh, subtract there, I'll just do the shorthand, 12,000, and on the downside, it's going to be uh, distracted by the television. I've already seen this video, stop. Uh, 9,200, and we can go back and forth, I guess, but uh, if Wilkie doubles up, he's got 7,600, so stay above that. Uh, Aaron would have to cap her wager at 7,200. And I guess technically, Brennan could wager 10,000. Brian, uh, sorry. Damn you, Trebek. Okay, uh, and now we go to the mind games between Aaron and Brian. If uh, Aaron goes for the 7,200 amount, that's going to be uh, 22,000, so that's a $4,400 wager. And if Brian is wrong, she's going to have 13.2, so Aaron could wager up 1,600, and there's more mind games we could have there, I guess, if you want to go even farther, but further, technically. Uh, four is only 1,200 on the downside, okay. We're not going to get too involved there. But for zero cover wagers, uh, let's see. Not 2,800, 5,600, we'll put there. Uh, 2,800, no, it doesn't go anywhere. I don't want that. Get rid of it. Uh, downside 2,800, we already covered that. I guess maybe 5,600, but I don't like that wager that much here. I guess we could cap it like that. This is all secondary, because I anticipate Brian will go for the 12,000 wager, and I'm guessing, well, I think Aaron's going to go for the 71 idea. And Wilkley should go all in, because that's his only chance of winning. All right. It's not like Wiggly had his own cheering section when today. When Playwrights was revealed as the category for final, Bryna looked over at Aaron, our champion, who is <laughs> an English professor, and smiled ruefully. Well, let's uh, get to the oh. clue right now. Alex is a master of reading An 1892 people's... Punch cartoon depicts him lounging with a cigarette and holding a fan with a name written on it. 30 seconds, players. Good luck. <laughs> Okay, Wild would be the right time. I think George Bernard Shaw would be a little early for him. Punch. Oh. I'd imagine it's a man's name that would be written on it. I have no idea though. The fan part of the clue was a very important part. 
Mowgli, we come to you first. You had 30. Can I? Were you able to come up with anything? No, Mugis. All right, it'll cost you how much? Nothing. You're That's right. a bad wager. Let's come to our champion. That's going to get a great English great. professor. Did she come up with the correct response? Oscar Wilde. Were you thinking of Lady Windermere's fan? I was thinking of lounging. Oh, <laughs> Either way, you're correct. It is Oscar Wilde, and you will have fourteen thousand seven hundred. I guess that wager makes sense. I totally forgot the category. Five hundred ninety-eight, and Bryna is shaking her head because she didn't come up with Wilde. She came up with yeah, George Bernard awesome. Shaw, and she lost twelve thousand dollars. Five five nine nine. You're finishing in second place, but Aaron Delaney, you now have a two-day total of fifty-three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. Way to go, young lady. We'll see you tomorrow. And you can see that uh, Brian had made the proper wager and Wilkley didn't have a chance with that zero wager. So there was absolutely no excuse for wagering zero there. Unfortunate. But I guess it didn't matter in the long run. But I'm all about process over outcome. I say that at least once a month, I'd say. Uh, what are the other notes I had? Oh, yeah, the weights and measures clue, the two things that come up on Jeopardy a lot, the phrase comes up. I. The first thing I thought of was potent and potables, and I realized it didn't make any sense. Uh, oh, the uh, the Daily Double in the first round, where Alex, the one right before the Daily Double, and I've said this before, Alex really drew out, that is the state. And it was at that point that I was like, yeah, okay, it's, I'm pretty sure only seven clues left, so I had a pretty good shot at that. Uh, yeah, but pay attention to those cues, it's what... Bouncing around precludes, but uh, some people are better at bouncing than others. Okay, uh, that's enough for now. We'll see you Tuesday. See you there and go for three. Right here on the final wager.